let's start from the beginning. Yeah. Your debut in cinema was with one of the greatest genius film has ever produced, Satyajit Ray. How did it begin? Well, it was a kind of accident. I wasn't in films then. And they were looking for Apurna, um, Apu's wife in uh, the last of the trilogy, Apur Sangsar, World of Apu. And uh, they were advertising, in fact, for the girl, a 13-year-old girl. And I remember I was in Asansol uh, visiting my parents. And uh, we went through the ad and everybody said, why don't you apply? And I said, well, uh, you know, it, it was a joke. And uh, I think uh, they had spies in front of all the schools. And I used to walk back from school because our house was quite close by. And somebody may have followed. I mean, this is what I feel. Nobody's ever told me. And I haven't found out exactly how it happened. But the phone rang. And there was Manikda, as we call Satyajit Ray. And he wanted a screen test. And my father said, OK. So the screen test happened and my father said only on one condition, I mean, don't take her if she doesn't suit the part. I mean, let her not make an ass of herself. But the screen test was all right and nobody objected. I mean, those days, you know, working in films wasn't quite the right thing. Uh, but uh, already Satyajit Ray was, you know, uh, had won over many people, many traditional people uh, like my family. And the, and the subject, Vibhuti Bhushan's, uh, you know, opus, it was very well read and widely read in Bengal. So, so it was okay and that's how it happened. And, and, and subsequently, of course, he cast you in, in perhaps his most dramatic film. I, I call it dramatic because it's one of my favorites, Devi. Now, can you talk a little about uh, the role in Devi, how he uh, sort of got you to act into it, how he explained the, the scenes to you and... Well, in Apur Sangsar, I was still in school. I was 13. And because of Apur Sangsar, I had to change school. Because uh, although my parents didn't object, but uh, the headmistress objected. She said, you know, she's a bad influence on others, etc. Anyway, so I went off to Asansol to live with my... And all these things had to happen during uh, vacation. Although Ray sort of uh, worked from start to finish. So after Apur Sangsar finished, and he must have been pleased because Overnight, Apurna became heartthrob of all young boys in uh, Calcutta, if not even outside Calcutta. So he asked me for Devi, and I was thrilled, and of course I accepted. But I was 14, Ramesh, and it was uh, Devi is a very complex character, and of course, again, only a young girl could have played it, but without understanding the nuances. So when I see myself today, I feel uh, it might, like you said just now, it's your favorite film. I think it's my best performance. And without knowing that I was performing. So that was Ray, you know, he, he got the best out of me without in any way uh, imposing his self on me. And I play a very um, traditional character. And I loved it. And this relationship between, you know, like in a joint family with one's husband, who is away most of the time, and yet she's not really, um, you know, threatened. There is no distance in the relationship as such, it, despite not seeing and despite uh, just writing letters to each other. And yet she is the decisive factor in his life, because when she becomes the goddess or made into a goddess, uh, he cannot decide. He cannot, it, it takes him time, and therefore she's lost. Uh, you know, meanwhile, th there's one particular scene which, which sort of haunts me because it, it surely, purely by the, in its sort of presentation, and that's the scene where the, the old man, the, 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 the you know, father-in-law, yes. first discovers or dreams that hmm. you are the goddess, and he comes and he throws himself at your feet, yes. and, and and you have that look and and your toes curl. Yes, curl. Hmm. Can you speak a little, describe that scene to me and how it was shot and what it was. Well, as you know, I mean, when the film, like uh, Chobi Bishwash, is uh, lost his wife and uh, he confuses, you know, the this daughter-in-law tends on him, looks after him and there is a kind of a whatever that is going on in his mind and he dreams that his daughter-in-law is the incarnation of the goddess. 
and and he falls at her feet and she is completely you know she is completely unready for this event you know a father in law a very young girl she's about 17 and uh, i mean she doesn't know what's happening so it's a total shock total um, you know stopping of everything like she becomes immobile with shock and yet i mean her mind becomes numb but her body curls i mean withdraws you know not out of repulsion but out of fear and out of total um like i said shock you know so so these things were actually contrived i mean how to this this is what was going on in his mind and in my mind but this had to transfer on so with the <clears throat> the superimposition you know of the face on on uh, my face <clears throat> and uh, the curling of the toes because you know his face is there and then the hand i mean that was the tricky part because i had no nails those days and this we used to be shooting in the set and you know that funny sound it makes and one had to do it quite a few times too but it's very effective but mainly i think is the music and the and the face of the the goddess and and even i actually felt you know as a as a 17 year old i mean sobida who was again a great uh, veteran and uh, call kashmir ki kali and that the trend those days like the teeny bopper you know these young couple trend love stories was going on so about that time the similar kind of trend was on lots of songs uh, love stories and quite frivolous after ray so this offer came along and again my parents felt that uh, you know it's a bengali setup so they felt somewhat safe so i went uh, i lived in calcutta and in um, just went and worked for 5 days i mean every schedule i would uh, come to bombay lived there in a hotel so it wasn't really i didn't consider that it was going to be a profession it was just a lark to begin with and that's how it happened and every year i was sort of giving up films and in fact devan varma says that there were three people who was constantly giving up one was ashok kumar one is you and one is bishwajit and i won't give you the reasons for all that <laughs> but uh, i never gave up kashmir ki kali was of course a super That's hit right. hmm. and uh, you know helped by the fact that some marvelous songs shammi kapoor's uninhibited acting and yours your yes beauty i think there's a particular song that tarif karu ya do you remember that and sing the houseboat and all that jumping around <laughs> yes i remember that and um, name the song uh, and talk about it <laughs> tarif karu kya uski and uh, there was a there were lot of uh, uh, metaphors you know like lot of reference to neeli aankhe and all that and uh, i had i was doing my eye makeup and i had somehow nicked my eye and my eyes were anything but blue it was bright red but of course we couldn't stop shooting so we carried on <laughs> and shami kapoor at one point surprised everybody by jumping into the lake which was freezing cold but he was uh, he was unique i mean there was nobody else uh, like shami kapoor you know and he had this tremendous energy and uh, vivaciousness that uh, that captured his audience you know so that was his style and i was pretty right out of a uh, bengali school of acting so i was pretty demure and pretty slow compared to this and like you said um, the music was brilliant it re- really was very very good opi nayar was the music director asha bhosle sang lot of the songs and i was very unused to like you know bombay film is all about singing and dancing and i although had danced uh, some sort of manipuri dancing and kathakali dancing but i had trained for real dancing but you know uh, like dancing in around the trees so to speak was very new so i was kind of raw in that film but even that had its own appeal so i guess the film did very well well you became quite a well known star in bombay also yet you came back to ray i rather ray brought you back yes you know with nayak i think and nayak then, yes and then uh, ornir din ratri which again is one of ray's was complex and and brilliant films when you look at his total work you know can you speak a little about 
there's one particular sequence that fascinates me and that's that memory game. You know, the way something so static as a scene is, is you know, the, the psychological drama that's created. Please tell me a little about how he did that with you. That well, um, days and nights yes, in the forest, forest um, or in Din Ratri. It was a very complex film because that was the first time he was trying to break away and getting into the, you know, trying to get to grips with the modern directors and um, and that was his effort. And there were these four boys. So when this memory game is being played, it really, it's not just a game, it's, uh, it's everybody's personality comes through that and the names that they select is, um, it shows a little bit about their background whether they're literate or not, whether they're sports-minded or not, or whether they're politically inclined or not. So, you know, like Shakespeare, Tagore, Che, Mao, these are the names that come to me offhand, but there were a lot of games. And, and, and their winning and losing become so important, so that also shows their... And like a lot of people had said, I mean, this is just not a, only my thought, but it says that it can be compared to India than the fragmentation of, because it's so many cultures and so many, um, you know, different, different, it's not like just, uh, not like Japan, for instance, like one of the characters says, you know, not like a mono culture scene. It's got different uh, input and therefore maybe not just one. So you can either look at it, I mean, as a fragmentation, like the, throughout the film it goes, you know, the dancing bits, Right. and the wheel, you know, where they just... Uh, so it's like, uh, a word game is also like that. India, then it's the, the cast and their different uh, input and their thinking and their emotional stress and, you know, their psychological, not just their intellectual uh, capacity, but also what they're feeling. Like uh, she allows Ashim to, I allow Ashim to win. Now that's my ego and his ego is intact. So, you know, these things, and one person is a sportsman, and one person is a gambler, and, you know, he wears these dark glasses, and, and then, you know, the snatching of the pillow, and so it, it's a, and how he builds it up, and the camera work is equally important. So, it, it easily is the best scene, I think. You know, um, and a thought-evoking uh, scene. You, you yes. have worked with Satyajit Ray, and you worked in Bombay. How did you manage to combine this uh, almost schizophrenia? Well, I've combined many more, you know, not just work, because work has always been a part of my life. And maybe, I don't know, maybe I've... Whatever I do, and whenever I do it, I do it, I do it very seriously. So whether it's a Hindi film or whether it's a... It is me. I'm the common person, you know. And I take myself pretty seriously, and I don't want to make a fool. And if I'm, if I'm dancing, and if I say, "Oh God, this is a, you know, this is useless," then I'll come across looking even more foolish. So I have to do it as to the best of my, like kabuki is a is an art form, you know. So this is also a kind of form and a kind of media, and I have to do it seriously. And that, and then after that, I don't think much about it, you know. I let go. And whichever phase of life I go through, I do that very seriously and I don't look back and I don't plan too much ahead and I zero in on what I'm doing right now. Like if I'm giving an interview right now, I mean this is the moment that I'm living for and I'm pretty light, you know, because there's not a burden of a huge past and my image. Most times I'm not conscious of it. So perhaps uh, that is why I can adapt. Um, Easily, and, and that is why you can you can sing a song like Kora Kagaz Ye Hai Man Mera as equally as you can. Crawl, yes, you like know. when I when I'm doing something like Kora Kagaz, um, I'm thinking of romance, and I'm thinking of being in love and being happy, and uh, certain mannerisms do come across because the you know we have in Hindi films uh, somebody called a music director, you know, uh, not the director who's directing a film, but also uh, somebody who tells you. Uh, like one, two, three, four, you know, there's rhythm involved and you know, on a certain beat you have to turn right or you have to do this, so which is not natural, like I'm talking to you and my hand is moving, but if it has to move at a certain beat, then you know, you become a little, 
So, you know, certain mannerism and certain stiffness uh, used to come. But then later on, I said, well, uh, okay, if he's saying smile, so I have to still make it real, you know. So, yes, I could could sort of become a good singer and dancer, yes. But, you know, even in Hindi films, uh, subsequently, you did work in some very serious films, with Gulzar especially, you know, films like Namkeen and Mausam. I mean, how was it different from working in, say, um, a, a Satyajit Ray film or a... Good but throughout my career, actually, I've been quite lucky. I worked with Ray, and then uh, when I went on to uh, Hindi films, I had my shares of Kashmir Ki Kali and Aga Le Lagja. But also, right at the beginning, I worked with, immediately after Kashmir Ki Kali, I worked in a film called Devar, which was adapted from a Bengali um, novel, uh, directed by Mohan Saigal, and that was a very serious film. And then immediately, well, I was working in Vakht and uh, a film with Bridge, uh, which was, um, I forget the name the now. Evening in Paris also and then Evening in Paris, Paris etc. I worked in Anupama, which yes. is uh, Rishikesh Mukherjee's film. <coughs> then I worked in film like Rishikesh Mukherjee's Anupama. So every uh, say three or four films later, I would be working in a so-called uh, serious film. So it's not that there was ever a long gap. And uh, then I worked in films like uh, Gulzar's film, Mausam, which I loved. And out of all the other films, the commercial films, Amar Prem, which was a commercial film with a difference and which was very well liked by a lot of people because uh, this girl was kind of uh, an ideal woman in everybody's life, you know, who the typical Indian woman who took it all and never answered. And so it was fun playing that role and it was great working with Gulzar. And in fact, he and somebody like Ashit Sen also was a very good uh, director and Rishikesh Mukherjee so and Gulzar's kind of, he helped me a lot with dialogue delivery, you know. He, he had a style which was very um, succinct and very practical way of speaking and that helped my performance and Ashit Sen taught me how to use my eyes. I mean after Ray, Ray used my eyes very well but that was his expertise and you know his cameraman's whereas Ashit Sen taught me uh, how to you know, use my eyes and where to look at the camera and camera as a how to speak to the camera, etc. So these are the directors that I've uh, enjoyed working with. And you know, in terms of uh, your your career today, when you look back, you know, are, are you sort of satisfied with uh, what you have achieved? Because you have contributed a lot to Indian cinema. But personally, what do you? Well, uh, there are a lot of perks, you know, as in India, cinemas are very popular and being a cinema star, you're known all over India. So if I walk into a restaurant and there's no table, I get a table, you know, so I get very preferential uh, treatment, which I, which I lap up because, you know, why not? But again, I'm a very private person, so do I don't like being stared at. But if you say that what I consider my achievement I'm pretty critical of, uh, you know, when I look back and I see my film, I feel like it's like somebody else. This time I went to San Francisco to receive an award on Satyajit Ray's behalf, which I thought was a great honor. And I saw Apur Sansar after a long time. And I said, my God, how beautiful, how, how innocent. It was like looking at somebody else. So I do uh, see what I've done. And I enjoyed it at that time, and I enjoyed looking at it now. Other than that achievement, I don't feel, I mean, life is, you know, in its totality. And I am one of those, call me a philosopher, if you will. I don't know, it was a part of my life which I enjoyed thoroughly. And I'm happy it happened. It gave me a lot of independence, it gave me a lot of money, it gave me an option to see the world and, um, and I've gained a lot of, I am today of what happened. And now I'm using all that experience and I'm still very happy and I'm still very content. So I don't keep looking back. I feel I'm even achieving now and <clears throat> the achievement goes on. You know, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's how I feel. And, and what is in store in the future? In the future, 
I take one day at a time now. I mean, I did toy with the idea of directing a film. Maybe I will. But you know, I, I have a family. I have a husband who's very demanding and uh, my children are very demanding. Or maybe it's me, it's, maybe it's not them. I like to be around them, you know, I like to enjoy their company. So it's, I don't really follow an individual goal. I, I've always followed a family goal. And to me, family is very important because I come from a joint family. My husband is also a joint family. So I'm a product of that era. So I've never really thought of going away and striking on my own and, you know, being a career person. And yet a whole career has happened, you know, I've worked for 30 years and I still like working, but where, where my family is involved. So directing a film would mean, uh, you know, loving my crew and working all the time. So that may or may not happen, may or may not happen. But other than that, uh, we have restored our family home. I'm involved with a video magazine called uh, Eyewitness which takes a little bit of time. So, you know, 30 days goes doing lots of things and I'm quite happy and I, I'm, I'm lazy, I love traveling, I meet, like meeting people. So, it's no problem. Thank you.